warm greeting. Today is Sunday, July 27, 2025. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. In today's video, I'd like to provide an update on a strong tropical wave that will be emerging from Africa over the next few days. Some meteorological models keep it quite strong as it moves westward across the tropical Atlantic. This is the same tropical wave I mentioned in the last video, but important changes have emerged in the projections, which have resulted in a decrease in the chances for development. In fact, before we continue, it's important to mention that at this time, the National Hurricane Center has not marked the area with potential for tropical development, so overall we can say that the Atlantic remains very quiet. And after we take a look at the latest model projections regarding this tropical wave, in the second part of the video I'd like to discuss how the Atlantic is actually not favorable at the moment for tropical activity. It seems that at least the first two weeks of August will be fairly quiet, and in fact, some of us suspect that the upcoming seasonal forecasts from specialized groups might result in a reduction in the level of activity we were anticipating this year. So I'll be discussing what factors may be creating the currently unfavorable conditions for an active hurricane season. Recapping what we talked about in the last video, a Kelvin wave was passing through the tropical Atlantic, creating somewhat more favorable conditions for tropical development. And a favorable phase of the Madden-Julian oscillation will be moving through the region in early August, so it was logical to expect that the tropical waves emerging from Africa would at least have better chances for development compared to what we've seen in recent weeks. However, despite the more favorable conditions provided by the Kelvin wave and the Madden-Julian oscillation, it seems that this won't be enough for us to see significant tropical activity, something already reflected in the global models. For example, let's look at the American model projection for August 3rd. At the end of last week, it showed a tropical depression or tropical storm in the Eastern Caribbean, but in recent runs, it shows a much weaker tropical wave. In fact, as of yesterday, this model no longer shows any development of the tropical wave coming from Africa. We see the same trend in the European model, which last week showed a possible tropical depression passing over the northeastern Caribbean in early August. However, now it only shows a strong tropical wave without any development. Additionally, the German model also shows a strong tropical wave crossing over the northeastern Caribbean next weekend without developing into a cyclone just like the UK model, which shows the wave crossing over Puerto Rico and the Eastern Dominican Republic, but without becoming a tropical depression or tropical storm. So overall, this is definitely good news since the chances for development have dramatically decreased according to the latest model projections. This is even more evident when we look at the ensemble members of the American model, where almost none of them develop a tropical cyclone. But interestingly, we can see that north of Bermuda, in the subtropical Atlantic, some low-pressure systems may have some potential for tropical development. Development in this area wouldn't be surprising, and we'll discuss it more later when we analyze sea surface temperature anomalies. Meanwhile, the European model ensemble still has several members, about 40 to 50 percent, that show the potential development of a tropical depression. However, they keep the system quite weak as it moves west-northwest, and it's not until it reaches the southwestern Atlantic and subtropical North Atlantic that we may see a possible window for tropical development. Also, Members of Google's artificial intelligence model show that some of them hint at a possible tropical depression forming northeast of the Caribbean. But the percentage is quite low, and it's not until the system moves south and southwest of Bermuda that the development chances may increase. So, based on all this, I think it's pretty clear that it will be difficult for the next tropical wave emerging from Africa to develop before reaching or passing near the northeastern Caribbean. However, if it manages to take a path toward the southwestern Atlantic, Conditions there could be more favorable for the development of a tropical cyclone. Still, this is long-term, and we'll simply continue to monitor any changes in the projections. So for now, things remain quiet in the Eastern Caribbean. I'd like to use this part of the video to expand a bit on why conditions are not favorable for tropical development and the factors that may indicate that this season could even be less active than we had previously projected. One of the main reasons why conditions are not favorable for tropical development in the tropical Atlantic is that dry and stable air continues descending from mid-latitudes, creating highly stable atmospheric conditions, which is basically the enemy of tropical cyclones. This dry and stable air can be seen in this graphic, where the brown color represents dry air descending from the mid-latitudes and from the region of the Azores and Canary Islands. This is mainly due to the Azores high being stronger than normal, which favors the descent of dry air toward the tropical Atlantic. And as long as this dry and stable air continues descending into the tropics, conditions will be unfavorable for tropical waves to organize cyclonically. As I mentioned in the previous video, the development chances of the next tropical wave would depend on how well it can shield itself from the dry air. But when we look at the latest projections, we can see, for example, the American model showing the tropical wave approaching longitude 40W on Thursday, 
with a lot of dry air to the northwest and west of the wave axis, which would represent a significant obstacle to tropical development. In fact, we see the same in the European model projection. Notice that by Friday, as it crosses the 50W longitude, dry and stable air interferes with the wave axis and basically limits the formation of thunderstorms and rainfall, thus closing the door to development. This pattern seems likely to persist during the first two weeks of August. Here we see the extended forecast from the ensemble members of the European model, which shows the Azores high stronger than normal. We also see low pressures near the Canary Islands, likely associated with a lot of Saharan dust emerging from Africa. The combination of this Saharan dust and dry stable air from the mid-latitudes toward the tropical Atlantic will create conditions that are not very favorable for development in this region. Now let's look at other factors that could continue making tropical development difficult, perhaps extending until late August. For this, let's look at the map of sea surface temperature anomalies. First, we are still under neutral ENSO conditions in the Pacific which typically result in more favorable conditions for tropical development in the Atlantic, and which is the main reason why a slightly more active than normal season was forecast this year. However, tropical activity does not depend solely on ENSO conditions. Other factors can greatly influence how active or inactive a hurricane season will be. One of them is the state of sea surface temperature anomalies. And despite above normal temperatures in the main development region, there are other factors that may counteract these effects. The first is that in the Gulf of Guinea, sea surface temperatures are cooler than usual. Some studies have found that cool waters in the Gulf of Guinea pose challenges for development from the African region. On the other hand, notice that in the North Atlantic and North Pacific, the subtropical region has much warmer than normal temperatures, which weakens the Hadley cell across the tropics. So I'll give you more detail on this. For that, I want you to look at sea surface temperatures in the North Atlantic. Specifically, Note how the subtropical Atlantic has sea surface temperatures almost equal to those of the intertropical convergence zone, and this can cause the Hadley cell to weaken, resulting in atmospheric stability across the main development region. To better understand this concept, typically, near the equator, sea surface temperatures are warm and the atmosphere is quite humid, which results in air rising in this area. On the other hand, cooler temperatures in the subtropical Atlantic typically create conditions where the air descends in the subtropical region. As an example, in the following graphic we can see a profile of what a Hadley cell looks like. Near the equator and across the tropical Atlantic, warm and moist air rises to the upper levels of the atmosphere, generating low pressure and cloudiness associated with the intertropical convergence zone. Then, as this air ascends in the atmosphere, it moves toward the mid-latitudes and descends in the subtropical Atlantic around 30 N, where we currently have very warm temperatures. This breaks the Hadley cell because the warm temperatures in the subtropical Atlantic cause the air to rise and weaken the descending air typically found in this region. As a result, the Hadley cell is weakened, meaning that air does not rise as easily in the tropical Atlantic. In other words, a more stable atmosphere is created in the main development region. This is a very important factor this hurricane season that could make it harder for us to see tropical cyclones. This is so evident that if we analyze how pressures have behaved across the tropical Atlantic this year, we see in red that the Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico, and tropical Atlantic have had much higher than normal pressures. And if we compare over the last 45 years, the Atlantic has had the highest pressures recorded since 1980. This, in turn, has also created a very stable atmosphere. And we can see that since May, the tropical Atlantic has experienced below normal instability, clear signals that the Hadley cell is very weak. As if that weren't enough, the area where tropical waves originate is also experiencing below normal rainfall anomalies, which may also be a factor that hinders the formation of strong tropical waves that typically generate cyclones in the Atlantic. This analysis is based on some images shared by meteorologist Eric Webb, who also published his forecast for this hurricane season. Notice in yellow and orange the area where he believes there may be more tropical activity this year, which would be in the subtropical Atlantic. Also, note that his forecast shows a slightly less active than normal season, which now, as we approach August, seems more evident. And if we don't see significant changes in the extremely warm temperatures in the subtropical Atlantic, this season could end up being less active than we had previously forecast. Even so, remember that storms and hurricanes will form in the coming months, and a single hurricane can affect the area where you live. So it's important that we all continue monitoring the tropics during the peak of the season. But for now, we can remain calm since there is no imminent threat. Well, with that, I'll wrap up. I hope everyone has an excellent Sunday. Until the next video, see you then.